Should Christians watch secular movies and listen to secular music? Oh my goodness. What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to the studio. Today we are doing a Q&A. I asked you guys on my Instagram to send in questions and you guys send in questions on YouTube and Instagram. And so I'm going to answer some of them for y'all and I'm excited. Q&As are exciting. So let's go. Okay. I don't know why I'm talking like that. Let's do this. So the first question is, what is the most important thing for new born again believers to consistently do? And I really believe it is so important that new believers know you have to keep consistently seeking the Lord in the secret place because church services and your pastor cannot sustain your relationship with the Lord. Jesus is so important to commune with the Holy Spirit, to commune with him, to fellowship with him, to get in that secret place with God. The secret place is where it's just you and him and you're reading his word, you're studying his word for yourself and letting him speak to you and you're just in prayer and in worship in that place and staying there consistently daily, getting deeply rooted and grounded in him and in his word. How do you remain humble while offering constructive criticism to the American church? How do you keep the heart of humility? I mean, I get this question for sure. I think that it's so important because it's so easy to get prideful, especially with having a YouTube channel or Instagram following or whatever. You have to be so careful. And the Lord has shown me that I have to be so careful. The thing is we have to take the low road. And he showed me that the way to staying humble and staying consistently like humbling yourself before the Lord and being humble before other people is keeping that servant's heart because Jesus, when he came to this earth, he did not come to be served. He came to serve. So I think what's really important is that we don't walk into rooms expecting everyone to serve us, especially when you're in ministry, but walk into rooms looking for ways to serve other people. God's really shown me the importance in that. It is so important to keep a servant's heart because that is what Jesus did. He literally washed his disciples' feet. And back then, they didn't have paved roads like we do. And so their feet were pretty dirty. <laughs> so Jesus, Jesus humbled himself and washed his disciples' feet. How cool is that? When you have children, will you homeschool them? That's a good question. I do, Lord willing, plan on homeschooling my children. I Lord, <laughs> that grammar, I feel like was awful. Y'all are like, oh my, you better not homeschool your children. I, Lord willing, do plan on homeschooling my children. And I think that the school systems are pretty crazy nowadays. And they are teaching a lot of just crazy indoctrination. You think about the agendas that are being pushed in the schools nowadays. And I am like, yeah, I'm homeschooling my kids. The things kids hear in school, I remember being in elementary school. I went to public school, only in elementary school. I remember the things that I heard then. And I was like, I can't imagine what kids are saying now. And so I want my kids to raise, to be raised, to be warriors for Jesus and just to be on fire for him and deeply rooted and grounded in his word and led by his spirit. And I believe that if your kids are going and like, you got to pray about what's best for you. But like, for me personally, I believe if my kids are constantly in that environment and just being surrounded by, you know, secular thought and other kids who are not walking with the Lord, whose families are not walking with the Lord, and they're just saying a lot of filthy, awful things. They're with that school and with that teacher way more and way more many hours than they're with you. So I really think it's important to train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. But long story short, I, yes, I do plan on homeschooling my kids. What are your thoughts on delivering demons? And I think they're asking, what is my thoughts on deliverance? I believe deliverance is really important in the church or for the church to do, for believers to do. In Mark chapter 16, it says that these signs will follow all them that believe. They'll cast out demons. They'll speak in tongues, all of that. You know, where it talks about healing the sick. I think it's really important that we cast out demons as believers. It's needed. There's so many people who need deliverance. And yes, the Lord can set them free, but 
I believe like, you know, the Lord has given us the authority that through the power of his name, we can cast out demons and the church has neglected this for so long. People need deliverance. People need set free. So many believers are afraid to cast out demons. It's not something to be afraid of. If you're truly following the Lord and you're walking in his Holy Spirit, he will give you the boldness to cast out demons and not be afraid to do so. Should Christians watch secular movies and listen to secular music? Oh my goodness. So this question is interesting. And honestly, you got to be led by the Holy Spirit on what he wants you to do. But I think that it's very important that we are not walking after the flesh as believers and we are supposed to be holy as he is holy, as God is holy. And I think the more that you spend time with God, the more that you become holy and you become more like him, the one who is holy. Because you think you like you hang out with your friend, whatever friends you hang out with is the friends you're going to become most like. And so when you hang out with God, you're going to become holy as he is holy. And you're going to want to start cutting out things like TV shows and movies and music, especially secular TV shows, movies and music. Honestly, I don't watch a lot of movies. I still will watch movies, but I don't watch a lot of movies anymore. And I do not listen to secular music like the Lord has really plays that strong conviction in my life to cut out all secular music. Bad movies and bad TV shows, 100%. Bad secular music, 100%. But I don't really listen to secular music in general. Like, I don't. Um, I just listen to all Christian worship music. But I don't watch a lot of TV shows and movies in general. But when I do, of course, they're clean. Or I use this thing called VidAngel that actually, like, cleans up movies for you. Or I just watch clean movies in general, like uh, Christian movies or something. I just don't really watch movies or TV shows a lot. But the closer that you grow to the Lord, the more that you will push out the things of the world and want the things of God. Somebody asked, how do I get out of a spiritually dry season and be on fire for Jesus? And they said, by spiritually dry, they mean they haven't been consistent in the word or in prayer for years and they want their desire and fire for Jesus back. Girl, this is an awesome question. And I think that it's super important that you start with literally just getting in that secret place with the Lord, get in prayer and get in the word. Like it sounds so simple. You're like, okay, like that's what I need help with. But that's like literally what you got to do. Repent for not spending time with the Lord and repent of anything you need to repent of any sin, but get in that place with God. Like, you know, he will forgive you of all your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But I think sometimes the hardest thing is literally just opening the Bible and getting in the word. And I think as soon as you get in the word, it's so cool because sometimes we don't feel like getting in the word, but if we're always led by our feelings, then we're not going to have a true relationship with Jesus. We got to be led by faith and we have to be led by the Holy Spirit. We got to be led by the word of God, not our feelings. Our feelings will lead us astray. And that's when we will, that's when we will become spiritually dry. So literally open the word and read it dig into it, allow the Holy Spirit to be your teacher and get back into prayer again. And I believe with with that, with spiritual hunger, spiritual hunger grows when you spend time with the Lord. So the more you spend time with the Lord, the more you spend time in prayer, the more you spend time in his word, the more you're going to want to. And the more you're like, You just got to stay consistent with it. Physical hunger, you eat and then you're full, right? But with spiritual hunger, the more you eat, the more you're hungry for him and his word and for prayer. You got this in Jesus name. Get back to the Lord. Let's go. (laughs) Have you ever had visions or dreams you are almost certain were from the Lord? Yes, I have. And I have had dreams about the end times over the years. I think I for sure knew were from the Lord. I've had dreams even more recently of just stuff happening in life. The Bible says in the last days that he will pour out his spirit on all flesh and will have visions and dreams. So I think that is awesome that God can speak to us through visions and dreams. When are you coming to Australia? Um, I actually have wanted to come to Australia for a while now, and I think it would be awesome. That is probably one of the top places on my list I want to visit like bucket list places is Australia. Um, Actually, shout out to Zach. <laughs> Zach editing this video is from Australia. So you can say what's up, Zach. <laughs> but yeah, Australia looks like a super cool place just to visit. So I would love to take a trip there sometime for sure. Y'all, if you want to invite me to Australia to your church, my email is in the description. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Kind of sort of. (laughs) Somebody asked if I believed in the Trinity. I believe, yes, God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. So, yeah, I mean, that's what the 
word says. Favorite scripture verse. Um, I have like two. One is probably Matthew 10, 22. You shall be hated for, by all men for my name's sake, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. And the other one is Ephesians 5, 14. Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. So it talks about awakening the sleepers. And I love that verse. How exactly do you study the word? I actually did a video on how to study the word. So you can click up there. I'm going to put the link somewhere up here. <laughs> what is your pet peeve? Like, I don't know if this is a pet peeve, but I really don't like the sound of brushing teeth. People brushing their teeth is really gross to me. And I first found this out when I first started having sleepovers, like in elementary school and stuff, like friends would be over brushing their teeth in front of me. And I was just like, that's so gross. Like, it's the same thing. I figured out like when, like the sound of scrubbing a floor, like one time my grandma was scrubbing the floor and it was the same sound like, ch -ch -ch -ch. that is so gross. I don't know what it is about that sound, but I don't like it, but I can handle it and I can brush my own teeth. But what I do is I just like turn the sink on then I can't hear it or if like a friend is over and they have to brush their teeth I'm like listen I'm gonna turn the sink on gal okay so so yeah I just like turn the sink on and it's fine what is the Lord teaching you in this season so this year the Lord has been doing so much in my life and I'm so grateful for it but it's a lot of just like refining and he's really teaching me his love this year it sounds crazy but I always knew Jesus loved me but this year in particular, he has been running after me with his love. And it's been insane. Like, I'm just really learning God as an Abba, as a father. Even just going to different churches, traveling, or wherever I'm traveling this year, the prophetic words I've received, like, it's all a lot about the love of the father. And he's just really been teaching me his love and it's been awesome so basically he's been freeing me of self-condemnation and he has been showing me his immense love for me and that's been so cool the other thing he's teaching me right now is how to become really sensitive to his voice and that is even if i have to cut out worship music and sermons for certain time periods so i can be more sensitive and just sit in his presence and listen to his voice somebody asked what is your primary love language <laughs> This is kind of funny. Um, I think it's quality time, but I'm not sure. I really enjoy quality time though. <laughs> what? Why do people ask this question? Somebody asked, are you married? No, I'm not married. And like I said in the last Q&A, somebody else asked this as well. I would tell you guys if I was married, I promise. <laughs> people ask that a lot. I don't know why. Why are you charismatic as opposed to cessationist? So I would say I'm charismatic opposed to cessationist because cessationism is the false belief that the gifts of the spirit have ceased and God no longer moves like that anymore. And my thing is like God doesn't change and prophecy and the gifts of the spirit have not ceased yet. They will have to cease one day because we're not going to need them any longer, especially once Jesus comes back or after we pass away or whatever. But I believe the gifts of the spirit are still for today. Like it's crazy to me that people don't believe that. I've seen healings. I've seen miracles. I've seen deliverances. I have personally experienced tongues and all kinds of stuff. Just like seeing God still move. It's so cool to see. Update on your thoughts about the COVID vaccine. Did you get it? Uh, still a no-go on the vaccine. And it's not something that I like to debate about. I actually did a video on this. Should Christians get the COVID-19 vaccine? So y'all should go watch that video. I just feel like the church is so divided over that right now and they shouldn't be and they need to stay focused on the main goal and main purpose. How old are you? I am 22 years old. What is your biggest dream? Somebody asked. Um, I would say my biggest dream, honestly, like I want to do ministry for the rest of my life. I want to raise a family. I want to be married, obviously. I think my biggest dream is just to follow the will of God for the rest of my life. And it sounds like kind of cheesy and like, cliche, but like, I want to follow the will of God for the rest of my life. I would love to raise a godly family who's truly on fire for Jesus. Like that is definitely a dream of mine and has been for a long, long time. I would love to just be a homeschool mom and raise my kids to just truly be sensitive to the voice of God and to be deeply rooted and grounded in his word and to be led by him. That would be so cool to like raise these warriors for Jesus, like intercessors, prayer warriors, preachers, like they don't have to be something like they don't have to have a social media following or whatever, like just kids that are truly on fire for God and have a deep love for him would be amazing. And just to be married and to have like a godly family who is just going after it and is going after the things in the kingdom 
and going out and fulfilling the Great Commission, not just sitting around. Like, that is a big dream, big goal. And just to see as many people as possible, as I as I can see possible, one to the Lord, like salvations and disciples and, and people being one to Jesus. Like, it's a huge dream of mine. You know, I mean, I have ministry plans and I have plans like I would like to see the Lord do. And I would love this generation to get back to biblical truth. And I, I'm praying on different things ministry-wise right now. But yeah, I don't know. That's is basically my dream. Like, I think that would all be awesome just to see in my lifetime as the Lord wills. Y'all, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on these questions. Maybe put in the comments how you would answer these questions yourself. And I'd love to continue the conversation in that comment section. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I will see you guys next week. I love you guys. God bless you guys. Keep looking to Jesus. Remember that everything's going to be all, if I get my thumb out, all good. And peace out. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. Make sure you check out my other videos over here and subscribe over there.